In this video, I'm going to talk about why and how we measure tire depth as an independent adjuster. Hey, this is Donnie Smith. I know it's been a while since I've posted. I've been really busy the last couple of years. Uh, during that time, I lived in Kansas, moved to Colorado, uh, lived there for two years. Colorado was very expensive. Uh, cost of housing just went crazy there. It has everywhere, but especially in the Denver, Colorado area, uh, become very expensive. So uh, this summer, I decided to move to Springfield, Missouri, and I have started an independent uh, adjuster company. You know, I uh, estimate cars for insurance companies. So I'm going to be telling you a little bit about my journey as an insurance adjuster. And uh, one of the first topics I want to talk about is tire depth. Uh, that's one of the most common questions I get whenever I go and inspect cars. I get out my tire gauge and I start measuring their tires. I'm like, well, hey, why do you, why you have to measure my tires? You know, they're kind of concerned why I'm doing that. It might just be hell damage or might be a fender bender and they don't understand why I have to do that. Well, the reason is well, we treat uh, every car like a total. We get all the necessary photos. Uh, it may not be required on every job, but the last thing any independent adjuster wants is drive one, two, even three hours somewhere, uh, take photos, and not get all the required photos. And that's one of them, which we'll talk, be talking about in this video. There's other ones we'll talk about in later videos. But uh, And you don't get photos of the tire uh, depth. And uh, you get back and realize there was more damage than you thought, the vehicle ends up totaling, well guess what? You know, that uh, insurance adjuster will have to drive back to the vehicle location on, at their expense and uh, get those photos. So another reason we do that, we just set a pattern. You know, we do a sequence of, of photos and we just uh, get in that habit of doing every photo that way you don't ever miss one. Because sometimes, you know, the vehicle owner has a lot of questions and they're talking to you. And it's easy to get distracted, and it really is easy to miss a photo. And you get back, uh, write up the estimate, and and uh, what I'm missing, you know, uh, the you didn't get the VIN or the mileage or, or a tire depth gauge or, or, or tire tread depth or you know something like that, you know. And then again, you're gonna have to drive back to the location, take that photo, and uh, so that you can get that turned into the insurance carrier. So that's why we measure the tire tread depth. Uh, the, and the reason the insurance carrier wants that, if it does total, well, if you just put brand new tires on there, uh, that way the insurance company will know. And, uh, you know, obviously you want to get all the money you can whenever, if it totals. And, you know, we want the, if you have new tires, we want the insurance carrier to know that. And that's why we'll also take a lot of interior photos because there's so many options on cars these days. If you've got a sunroof, we want a photo of it. You know, we take a picture of your door for all the options and, and stuff like that. So, uh, but yeah, we treat every car the same. Uh, that way we don't ever have to drive back to location uh, at our expense. So let's go ahead and start talking about measuring tire depth. Uh, there's some different tools for that. I'm going to show you. Here's a real basic one. These are very cheap. I think you can get them for about three bucks or, or six bucks for two of them. And it's mechanical. And the way it works, you set that on, push that all the way down. And then you put that on the bottom of the tread, the bottom of the groove. And then this will move up. And then this will set on top. And that way you can measure. But the problem with that, uh, if you're just doing this uh, so you know for yourself, uh, it's not so bad. You can sit there and look at it and see, you know, uh, where you're at on that. But if you're a... Uh, if you're taking this for an insurance carrier and taking photos, you know, it's kind of hard to get a photo of that. You know, it doesn't take a real good photo. So I don't like that for the purposes that we use it for. Um, I also tried a digital one. And these work really good. Again, if you're doing it for yourself, let me turn this on. Again, you push that down, put that in the bottom of the tread, and this is set on top of the thread, or the tread. And then that'll give you the measurements. So like right there, right there would be 11 30 seconds. And that's how tires are measured at 30 seconds. Uh, start out, usually 11 is a new tire. And then, you know, it goes, wears down from there. That works really good. But again, this does not take the best photos. Like you can't even see it that good in the camera, the reflection and everything. Uh, so I didn't like that one. The one I like the best so far that I found it's a mechanical gauge, but it uh, works the same way. You push that down, put that on the bottom of the tread. And, it, and as you can see, 
that's much easier to read. I don't know how it's shown up on video, but it takes great photos and uh, very clear and easy to see from a photo if an insurance carrier is wanting to look at how much tread's left. So this is my pick as far as working claims. This works really great. So like I said, a new tire, typically, and I'm talking about a car tire, not a truck mud or winter tire or anything like that, but your typical car tire starts out at 11 30 seconds. So that's brand new. And then each 30 second after that is about 9%. So if it was 10 30 seconds, you subtract 9%, that would be 91%. So there's 91% new left. And so I've made a chart here. So when, uh, adjusters also have to, uh, especially when it totals, do total loss forms and a condition report. And that's one of the things that asks, you know, how much tread was left uh, and what percentage of the tire is left. So I've got a little chart here. Like I said, uh, 11 30 seconds is gonna be new. 10, 30 seconds is going to be 91% of new. 9, 30 seconds is going to be 82% of new. So anyway, just uh, take 9% off as you go down to uh, 130 seconds. Now, what is recommended? When should you replace this? If you're someone at your home just wanting to keep an eye on your tires and have a good idea of when you should be replacing your tires, and that's at 230 seconds. When it gets down that low, that's not much tread left. And it's even required by some states that you replace those at 230 seconds. So if your car is getting down to three or four, it's getting pretty close to time to replace those tires. And you may want to go talk to your tire shop and uh, uh, discuss getting some tires replaced. And this way you'll also know, you know, uh, if it's at 530 seconds and a shop's telling you you need new tires, well, you know that you got some life left. You don't need to do it right yet. 230 seconds, that's whenever they need to be replaced and required by law in some states. Okay, now that I've got settled down here in Missouri, got my home office set up, I'm going to start doing some videos again. And uh, I'm going to be doing some how-tos, answering some of your questions, and talking a little bit about my journey as an independent adjuster. I hope you like these videos. If you do, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell. Thanks for watching. Take care, and we'll see you in the next video.